Thanks for being a part of Decision 2023 for Sullivan County Legislature. Coming to you from the Black Library in Monticello, I'm Mike Sakel, News Director for Catskills News. Thanks to MidHudsonNews.com. We'd also like to thank all of our candidates who have been participating. Laborers Local 17 is a proud sponsor of Decision 2023. Feel the strength of thousands of diverse and productive laborers constructing Sullivan County's water, sewer, roadways, and energy infrastructure, earning great wages, health care, and a pension. Feel the power of a career with Laborers Local 17. Visit liuna17.com to start on your career path today. There are two legislators unimposed in this year's election. In District 6, Legislator Louis Alvarez and District 7, Legislator Joseph Perello. I took the time to sit down with both of the candidates and ask some of the same questions heard throughout this debate series and give voters in District 6 and 7 an opportunity to hear what they have to say. With us right now is District 7 Legislator Joe Perello. He's uh, endorsed on both the Republican and Democratic line. Are you yes. running on any additional lines this year? No, just the uh, Republic, Republican, Republican line. I was cross endorsed by the cross Democrats. Cross endorsed. That's correct. And uh, now, originally, you came into the legislature legislature four years ago as a Republican. No, eight years ago. Eight years. This is my third term. So, and, and I'm a, I am a Republican. You yes. are. You are a Republican. Uh, what do you think was uh, really the the draw in getting your cross endorsement? I mean, what was it that well, that drew well, the, you? The, the folks at the town of Fallsburg in my district uh, feel and see that I do a fair job. Um, I'm not body, uh, party partisan, meaning that I don't vote with the party directly. I vote to my district what they what their needs are, and my opinion, and what I feel that is right for my community, and that's why I got elected for the first time. And I'm going to continue doing that going forward. Well, so let's start off with uh, with an easy question about oh, the economy. Question. No, <laughs> um, you know Sullivan County, of course, with the COVID pandemic, uh, there was a lot of assistance that came from the state, came from from the federal yeah. government, a lot of money coming in. Yes. Uh, now this year, and it's something I, everybody has spoken about in the legislature. Uh, this year, New York State is looking to rework after the latest budget some of the Medicaid. Uh, numbers and things that could definitely affect us locally. Reflect the county, yes. Yeah. So the question is, what do you think we should do? I mean, what, what, what are your steps? What would you look at to keep the county affordable? To keep uh, keep tax increases at a minimum. Well, going forward, and, and what I see happening now in the county is that we have a, a, an influx of new residents coming to the county. Uh, our assessed values are, go are, are going up. Uh, the value of homes are going up because of, of inventory, of course, and demand. Um, also, in the last, I think it's been probably 18 months, uh, New York State changed the rules and the law about point of sale with internet sales, which actually helped our sales tax out tremendously. Uh, that really brought a lot of revenue to the county. Uh, that's where a lot of our revenue is coming from today right. is because yeah. of sales tax. And you can, everybody sees it and, and sees the numbers that they're going up. Plus... The influx of uh, tourism, which helps the mom and pop stores, the local businesses. So sales tax and that uh, 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 avenue is working also for the county. But um, overall, I think the county is good. We have a lot more small businesses opening up slowly. Uh, the partnership is trying to bring in industrial type of uh, jobs into the area. And um, I, I see promise in uh, in good economics for the future of the county. I mean, at the local level, there's not a lot of control outside of, like you say, the tourism, economic development, things like that. I mean, do you, do you see anything specific that the legislature could do to really enhance that, really focus on bringing in more? Well, we could, we could, uh, we could advertise saying we have open arms for new businesses that come into our area and our district and and different, you got to remember, each hamlet of, of, of the county, each different town has its, its unique type of, of um, what would you say? Um, uh, You're talking about zoning? and, and Well, zoning, like yeah. infrastructure, water and sewer, like South Fallsburg, town of Fallsburg has a lot of water and sewer. We have, we have a lot of infrastructure. You go more to the western part of the county, they don't have water and sewer. So you would think, and Monticello has water and sewer also. So you would think the, the areas that have more infrastructure will get more of the commercial, as you see with Monticello and Liberty also. 
So the only way to attract businesses is to uh, expand our infrastructure, water and sewer, to be able to accommodate these businesses coming in. Well, so on a, on a broader question, and housing has also been talked about a lot. Right. You well, know, you know, I, I build homes also. Affordable I, housing. Okay. You know, I build homes. I, I, you I, build I, homes. So, so as, as so I can uh, you know, someone who knows, who knows yeah. a lot about this, you know, short-term rentals, of course, have, have increased the economy. Tremendously. Has yes. done a lot for Sullivan County. But availability seems to be a real issue, and especially when it comes to you know, working families and young people too. Young people, yes. I mean, what what do you think are some of the things that, uh, again, the legislature or we as a county could do to make it better to to have affordable housing? Well, the first thing is number one is infrastructure. You need water and sewer to accommodate multifamily housing, um, and that can only be where it's Monticello, Liberty, Fallsburg, Mamakin. I'm sure has some infrastructure down there. Uh, but, but the second thing is the cost of building today is very expensive. So for a, a contractor or a developer to, they, they work on 20% margins, 25%, depending on what the company is, maybe even 15. By the time you get done building out that project and then figure out what the cost is to get your returns, that's, it doesn't matter if it's working workforce development housing low income housing it still costs the same amount of money to build a build a project so the rents it's i'm i'm terrible sorry to say this but it's it's going to be expensive because to build a house today is like 120 dollars a square foot so if you build it a 1500 square foot uh, resident or an apartment or a thousand it's a lot of money so to get that money back it's 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 going to be expensive so what can you do? Like they did in Levittown years ago, 1960s, right? Mr. Levitt came in for the GIs coming back. They started building these small 1,200 square homes. And they were cookie-cutted homes. They were two bedrooms, on slab, and they were affordable. Could we do something like that? Yeah, you could do something like that. It would be, it'd be like first-time owners, buyers, young families going in at $150,000 a home. But... With the mortgage rates and everything else, so can it be done? It can be done, but you had to find the right person. You had to give them incentives to come here. You got to give them breaks on material, labor. Maybe if the county had a piece of land that we owed and said, "Listen, here, build on this." Uh, yeah, I mean, how how does the legislature itself do that? I mean, do you work with the with the partnerships with the economic development you would work with agencies? The, yeah, or? you yeah, you work with the partnership if they if they found the developer that would would be willing to do that, and. And it's, it's a risk to the builder also because the builder would have to build it out, either sell the project off or use it as rentals. And then in their eyes, they need to make a return on it. And, you know, what is affordable rent today? Is it $1,500 a month or is it $2,200 a month? Is it with the with the heat, and, heat and electric included? So there's all these different parameters, but what makes it affordable? It's up to the individual on their salary. I mean, that's what it is. If a, if a person's making fifty, sixty thousand a year, fifteen hundred, two thousand a month is probably a fair rate for a family of four. So, you, I don't know what the real answer is. It was it would have had to be researched out, and uh, you know, if we had a somebody who was interested in coming here to do that, I would definitely work with them. Now, the Sullivan Legislature recently agreed on those opioid settlement funds. Right. That was a, a big issue and a, a discussion that went on for several weeks, actually. Correct. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, you know, there was some heated discussions on focusing on education, young people versus some other uses for these funds, aside from the argument and right. the ongoing, you know, debate in the legislature. Right. I mean, what would your goal be? <clears throat> well, my on, goal on funding. I mean, what do you think that this money and it's been allocated now? What, it, what do you think should happen from here? Going forward, if we get more revenue, more money from the settlement, uh, now that the money's been dispersed out there, we need to see which programs are working for the people out there. And the one that's working is the one we should, of course, give more funds to because it's working. Not every program works. Uh, it depends what age group you're, going, you know, you're working for. Uh, like Louis Alvarez, he was at their officer for years, and 
they concentrated on, on fifth graders. After fifth grade, right, Louis? After fifth grade, they kind of, it kind of like slips away. We need to have that continual education. We need to start it at a young age to tell children that drugs are bad, marijuana is bad, all, all these types of drugs are bad, and, and, and show them, like they used to do years ago on Scare Straight about jail, show them what happens when you're addicted to drugs. Show them what happens when your friends die. And, and, and you got to put a fear in them that it's bad. And if you continue that education, I don't, I don't feel that it would be the problem we have today. And plus, you know, uh, we got to give enough funds to the, um, the police departments and agencies to crack down on these drug dealers because <laughs> they're, they're, the, they're the root of the cause, just selling the product. So uh, we got to continue educating our children and, uh, and have some more uh, afternoon activities to keep them occupied, focused on different things, whether it's hobbies, planes, models, flying homing pigeons. It could be anything. But anything to keep them occupied, not to go in a, in a, in a wrong path and direction. Well, and, but, you know, for those individuals that unfortunately might be in that situation, I mean, we, we all hear and a lot of the local organizations talk about stigma. It's an issue. Yeah. It's an issue. And, and uh, I guess the, uh, the question is, you know, do you have any ideas on how stigma plays a role? And, and as a community, as a legislature, is, is there anything that can be done about I, I it? I think what, people, people always feel for people. Uh, uh, I have love for everybody, and I'm sure a lot of people, but when they see people in a bad place, they always like to try to help. You could, people could only help themselves if they want to help. And, you know, we have to have more uh, clinics so people can go and, and speak to people and, 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 and try to get support. I mean, I know, I, I, I know there's a case in, in Fallsburg, a woman's living in a tent, and I brought this up at the legislature, and my wife ran into her at, at Stewart's and said, you know, you know, the county could help you and, and, and give you um, assistance to get out of a tent. She goes, well, I don't want to go there. They offered it to me, but the problem I have is they're going to put me in a, in a place to live where I've been clean for seven years and I cannot be in that atmosphere. So I'd rather live in the woods than to live in a different type of housing. So what we need is for people that when they come out of these clinics, we just can't put them into a motel where there's, whether there's homeless people, it has nothing to do with, with the drugs, but there's drugs follow that, that pattern, those, those, those people, and, and they put people in those hotels that are drug addicted, and it's not fair to a person that just came out and wants to do the right thing. We need to get some kind of a safe house, I would call it, that they can go there, live comfortable, be free of drugs, be monitored, get them back into the workforce, and then say, God bless you. And that's what we need to do. How does mental health play into this? Because, you know, there's, aside from the opioid abuse, the drug abuse problem, there is definitely a, a mental definitely, health crisis. I, I, there is, there is a there's lot of There's a lack health. of space in Sullivan County. Yes. Uh, how do you approach that? I, and again, I, as a legislator. I, I, as a legislator, you know, it's not my profession, but I, I, I don't know how to answer it. I, it you know, you just can't take a person that has mental illness and put them into a jail. It doesn't help. It doesn't work. Um, they need, I, I guess they would have to have some kind of a facility where they can help them. Like years ago, they used to have these um, hospitals. They put them in hospitals and they treated them and they, and they gave them guidance and they tried to figure out what their problems were and medicate them to fix their problems or whatever mental problems they had. Uh, it's really, I'm not really that keen on this because I don't know about a lot mm -hmm. of it. So I would always, you know, if I don't know. Well, again, the only, the, the question is really in, in terms of what the legislature can do. I mean, in, in this case, and I know you, you've you been working on the problems and again, with partnership, community partnerships, but uh, were you in on the recent meeting with Garnet Health? Uh, yes, I was. And those administrators? Yes, yes. Uh, and, right? and, and, and they, they enforced that they will be staying um, they do have plans in the future to uh, fix, expand, or correct the problems they have. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going through a financial thing, I think, the way it sounded to me, that they're uh, trying to figure out their expenses compared to new, new cost of building, and they, they might have something in the works. Are you, uh, 
feeling better about that? I mean, do, yeah, you, I do think, you feel I think, that they're I've always sincere supported, in their plan? Or? I've always supported our local hospital. And that's, and that's, one, that's what happens. If you don't support locally and they can't support themselves by us supporting them, they're going to leave, just like any other store. If you got a grocery store, you don't go there to buy groceries. Eventually, they're going to be gone. So in my experience in, in, in Garnett Health, my father was there. My children were born there. I never had a problem with the hospital. I think they do the best they possibly can. And going forward, um, you know, they have all these other facilities now, Middletown, which specializes in cardiac and, 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 and uh, strokes and stuff like that. So I can see why they transport all the time because they have the specialty out there. But um, we need to support our hospital. They're there for us. They say they're going to be here for us. So we need to support them. Uh, we talked a little bit about tourism and the economy. There's no doubt that's a major part of our economy. Yes. Uh, I wanted to talk a little about the bed tax issue because those funds uh, were removed from the SCBA contract. Right. Um, they've been sitting in a bank account, really. And as far as I know right now, I mean, they're, it's discussed in the legislature. It doesn't seem like there's a final final plan well we're, we're kind so. of in two different directions in two different directions with it um roberta and the visit association of the county does a fine job um the other legislators wanted to do go in a little bit of a different direction about promoting bringing uh, uh conferences here special events and that's all good and i agree to that you know that was my ideas also um but they wanted to add another layer to the Visit Association. Right. We have something that's working good. They're doing a tremendous job. So if we have a request and we're looking to expand our, our agreement with the Visit Association, we should ask them, to, you know, what can you do for us to make it better? So, so you we, would stay focused with I would stay SCBA? focused, absolutely. I mean, yeah. why, if it's working, it's not broken. So continue expanding off of it. So, you know, Roberta and, and, and company uh, was willing to do that. And um, we could f put the money through her department. If it's conventions they were looking for, hire a convention person, put them on a, a salary plus commission, use the extra monies we have for, for advertising, just like the Poconos do for you know all their events in, in the Poconos, and use those extra fundings to bring even more to the county, but use the Visit Association as a vessel to get the message across. So we're really limited on time. I have to ask you there, New legislative maps, new districts coming up, although there isn't too much of a shift within your district. But the other thing, of course, that I think everybody is thinking about is the legislative chairman. Right. So uh, going forward, I mean, should you, you win in November, um, what kind of leadership would you like to see in the legislature? Well, uh, the last four years have been challenging. Um, uh when I was first a legislator, uh, the first four years was uh, a very uh, good period that we had. We had a lot of, we had a lot of, uh, uh, what would you say? It was peace the and tranquility. Tr peace and tranquility. Was we there commun better communication between oh, the legislators? Oh, 100% more communication. Yeah. I mean, we all got along. We had our differences. We said what we had to say, but we got the job done. Uh, when, it, when it was all said and done, we we fixed the problems, we solved it. We Listen, everybody has their own differences, their own opinion. But we didn't argue, we didn't yell at each other, we didn't get angry at each other. We worked as a group, and that's what you're supposed to work, work and do. There's supposed to be differences. You're supposed to consider each other's thoughts and, and compromise. And that's what we did four years ago. This last four years has been very challenging. I won't get into it, but... Um, I think things are going to change this time around going forward. I think this going to be a change in the legislature. I hope that going forward that we can work together uh, as a legislature and be peaceful and listen to each other and um, move Sullivan County forward and, and to the best we can. Well, District 7 le legislator, Joe Perello. Okay. Thank you very much for the Thank conversation you. Okay. here. Decision right, 2023. Thank you. Thanks for being a part of these Decision 2023 debates for Sullivan County Legislature coming to you from the Black Library in Monticello. I'm Mike Sakel, News Director for Catskills News. I'd also like to thank our news partner, Mid-Hudson News, and of course, our candidates. 
Laborers Local 17 is a proud sponsor of Decision 2023. Visit liuna17.com to start on your career path today. Find these Decision 2023 debates on a number of platforms, including Catskills News Talk 92.5 and 94.9, as well as MidHudsonNews.com, plus MidHudson News YouTube channel and the Catskills News Pod podcast. Thank you for being a part of Decision 2023.